guys, this is Jessica here. Um, this video, I just kind of wanted to make a video about me and where I come from and just my family heritage, my family history. Um, I love doing research on um, family trees and ancestors and learning about where I came from and the type of people that make up me. I feel very strongly that, you know, you should honor your ancestors and try to keep their memory alive in things you do. So this is just kind of a video about um, my ancestry. Uh, my mom's side is German and Native American Indian. The German side of the family, um, we come from Bavaria, Germany. My mom's German side of the family comes from Bavaria, Germany name is Reisner and it can be pronounced so many different ways and spelled so many different ways so but looking it up it, the Reisners um, came from Bavaria Germany and Reisner in German means woodcarver. Part of my mom's family the Reisner part comes from Germany and this is their coat of arms woodcarvers <laughs> so maybe that's where some of the artistic gene comes from I don't know probably um, but um, you know I really don't know too much about my German side of the family I really don't know too much about my mom's side of the family I really have done all of my research on my dad's side because that's the side I really take after, you know, as far as um, physically and I feel spiritually. Um, but the Germans did have a tribe and we were with the tribe uh, Bavari, Bavari, B-A-V-A-R-I-I. -I. Um, and so I really don't know too much about that, but, um, you know, some of like the German customs were, you know, they did a lot of celebrations and festivals and I didn't really know this, but the Germans did have a, um, a maypole <clears throat> and they, you know, celebrated like that. I kind of thought that was only like a Scottish, Irish, um, you know, type of thing. I really didn't know it was a German type of thing, so that was very interesting to find out. My mom's side is also um, Native American, which I'm sure a lot of people do have Native American in their family. My great-great-grandmother was full-blooded Native American, and we come from the Choctaw tribe which um, I really didn't know too much about the Choctaw tribe. I knew they were kind of like a peaceful tribe, um, mostly, but that was really all I knew. So doing a little bit of research that I did, um, I found out that the Choctaw tribe was a member of the Muscogee family, which I think is the type of language that they spoke of learning new languages and you know I'm learning German I'm learning Spanish I'm learning Welsh right now so I kind of like to learn the languages that my ancestry has came from because I would love to travel to those places and you know most of those places speak those languages <laughs> so I would really really love to learn those languages on my mom's side of the family we have nine generations of Native Americans marrying the white people or so to say um, 
and like my mom has a list of names and stuff but I mean like we really don't know what it means you know to us they're just names um you know we really don't know like you know the people of it and things like that um but the Choctaw tribe was one of the five civilized tribes. Now that basically means that you know they went along with the English and they they um, pretty much accepted their customs and fitted in as much as they could. In our family, one of our ancestors was a Native American princess. Now, in the research I did, it says that, you know, a lot of families have that rumor and that, you know, it's just not true because the Native Americans did not have princesses. You know, they had chiefs, but they didn't have princesses. So maybe there was a chief somewhere in our family. And I mean, that's always a possibility. But, you know, it's just so hard to uh, um, get information about the Native Americans at least I have found it is because you know it's just like there's not a lot of stuff out there on the internet to really learn from but one thing I did find out is that the Choctaw people they practiced um, what's it called um, head flattening and I was like, head flattening? What is head flattening? And so then I looked it up and it's where they would um, elongate the head to where it looked like, you know, like a alien head or something. And I told my mom, I was like, did you know that, the ch that our people, the Choctaw people did head flattening? And so I kind of told her what it was and she was like, oh my God. <laughs> But, um, yeah, you know, it's just like with the Chinese people, you know, they, you know, wrap the feet to make the women's feet smaller. Or the Ethiopian, I think it's Ethiopians who wear the, um, the rings around the neck to stretch their neck out. Um, but yeah, the Choctaw people practice head flattening. So, um, that's my mom's side of the family. We are, um... We are a very artistic people. We are very um, spiritual people. Uh, we do have a temper. Um, I guess that comes from the German side of the family. And we speak our mind. We let things be known. Um, so, but I wouldn't have it any other way. I love my mom's side of the family. So my dad's side of the family is Welsh and Scottish. Um, I have done most of my research on my dad's side of the family because we have a family history book and you know it has all of our ancestors in it up to them coming to America. Um, now, it's hard to go back to our motherland because um, the name change that happened. Say this for the record, information that I have, if you are a Yancey or a Nanny out there, um, this is the information that I have. It may not be the correct information, but this is what I go on. This is what my family has gone on for generations. This is my dad's side of the family, the Yancey family, the coat of arms. My family does have a family coat of arms, um, but also, um, as I said, my last name is Yancey. And the, sto the Yancey story is very similar to the Nanny story. They are, all, they are 
identical. Even the family coat of arms is identical. So to me that says that the Yanceys really are the nannies, but the name change just happened. Or, you know, I think I read somewhere that, you know, it's kind of like, you know, we're cousins in a way, but the stories are exactly the same. So in my eyes, it's like, okay, well, you know, we were nannies, we came to America, and our name got changed to Yancey. Is that they were four or five um, brothers who were coming over to America with Sir William Berkeley. The Yancey or Nanny brothers came over to America with their cousin, Sir William. Cousin of the Yancey or Nanny brothers. Um, they did come from Wales. Of Wales that they lived in was called Shire. Um, I'll put the spelling up down below. Um, but there is a quote in one of the books and it says Ron Rongoch, north of Baal, was home, immigrated about 1640, and that was talking about the Yancey brothers. In my findings, found out that um, our the farthest back I can go was his name was Bladen Ap Sinef, which basically means prince of pals my descendant um the farthest i can go um and also we do have a descendant that was a knight of the round table which um his name was car cardoc frenchy frost um and of course I don't speak very good Welsh right now. It is said that the Welsh people are dark, vivacious, quick-witted, and benevolent, which is not malevolent, it's benevolent, and full of family pride and affection, and I think that describes me to a T. Whenever they did come to America, um, they did go to the South, and the South being what it was at that time, um, they did have slaves, and they did sell slaves, um, but you know, that does not make me a bad person. I cannot be, um, condemned for what my ancestors did, marry into royalty. Um, we married into King James I, King of England. Um, my family married into the family of King James I, who was the King of England. The first wife was a Bartlett, and we have a Bartlett in our family tree. So, if we could get, like, the information on it and then we could prove it that we married into royal there is a possibility that we were related to Robert the Bruce doing my research I found that the nanny slash Yancey name is known among genealogists as one of the oldest um traceable family lines and whenever I read that I was like oh my gosh that's like so awesome you are clearly ID'd as one of the families of the ancient Celtic royalty and you know whenever I read that I was like oh my gosh I'm royalty I am old royalty I'm not talking about the Queen of England who I love to death but it goes beyond that you know, with the time where they had um, lairds and lords and princes and, you know, it, I mean, just to know that my family is old Celtic royalty that dates way, way back, you know, that makes me 
it makes me feel like I have a certain air about myself and I try to carry myself in a certain way. Yes, I do have tattoos. Yes, I do have piercings. But that doesn't mean that I'm this wild, crazy person. It doesn't mean that I'm a bad person either. It's just how I choose to express myself. Family ruled. Um, North Central Wales, Pals, um, was a area that my family ruled. To uh, Bladen, which you know his name means Prince of Pals. Um, so that's pretty neat to know. And so my family Tartan, of course, is the County of Pals Tartan. Area that my family ruled and that they lived. Now, yes, I don't have like a name like. I don't have a tartan for my family name, like the McGregors or, um, you know, all the mechs out there, like the McClouds and all them, and all the great Scottish names, Stuart and all those. But, you know, my family did rule pals, and so um, that's the tartan that I choose to wear. Um, and I'm trying to save up money now to get it. The only place I can get it is way over in um, Scotland. So, you know, shipping costs a lot of money. So I'm really, really trying to um, save the money to get me my family tartan. Ancestor Bladen, he ruled in the 1100s and he died in 1075 and he was prince of the Welsh kingdoms of Gwendolyn and Pals. Um, he was also the son of a princess and she was part of the Dynfjord dynasty. Um, I, I'll have the spellings down below again. Um, but uh, Bladen, my ancestor, is said to have been a benevolent ruler, the most lovable and merciful of all kings. He was civil to his relatives, generous to the poor, merciful to pilgrims and orphans and widows, and defender of the weak, the mildest and most kindest of kings. And he was the founder of a dynasty which lasted until the end of the 13th century. Um, I just find it so fascinating and neat that I have an ancestor that people talked about that way. And so I try to be that way and to live that way so but i hope you enjoyed this little video and of my family history and if you like this video give it a thumbs up and if you would like more videos on family heritage just leave a comment and don't forget to subscribe bye thanks for stopping by my channel i hope you enjoyed the video and don't forget to like and subscribe